Today I'll be rebuilding the Montana Grizzlies and I have a time limit to win a championship with them. This video is a part of a three team rebuild series and if you missed part one where I fixed North Dakota State, you're gonna wanna see that one first so you don't get spoiled on anything. Anyways, for those that have already seen it, I won a championship with the Bison in season seven and I went 39 and 50 with them all time so that's what we're looking to beat with Montana in this episode. South Dakota State will be the final team after this and this is a reminder of what the Mountain West looks like. Now it's time to use Mark Mariani and remember, we are starting from scratch in these three rebuilds. Due to that, there's a lot of players that have us first on their board already, so I'm just going to add them, and I'm not going to immediately target them, but if we need some roster spots filled, they're going to be on the team. Our actual targets ended up turning out to be much higher overall, so we'll see if we can land them, and our first commit was 68 overall guard Jason Williams. Also, it doesn't mean much, but we won a game 5-3, to three, and none of these guys will be on the roster next year if you're wondering how that's possible. They all have to be redshirt seniors for us to start from scratch with only these guys, and by mid-season, Brad Richard, our future quarterback, committed. Now, on Unfortunately, we won't get everybody we want as Lee Lewis is going to go to Clemson, but high overall athletes Joe Bailey and Dante Turner believe in us. I am hoping that there are some transfers that want to come in, but nobody does, and I really don't understand that, but if we land these seven players, I'm not going to care too much. Well, it looks like I only got four, so I didn't split the points up the right way, but we did finish with a top 25 class in the country. The ones we lost out on weren't high overalls either, so these first 21 players feels like a great start to open up this program. A lot of these guys are going to have to play on both sides of the field but I'm going to make Joe Bailey a cornerback, and Dante Turner is going to be our number one halfback and wide receiver. I didn't recruit a single defensive lineman, so we're going to have to use walk-ons there, and the game did not bless us with anybody good. We were blessed with two new coordinators, though, so I can't complain, and thankfully our first real schedule doesn't have any top 25 teams on it. We're going into season two as a 55 overall, which isn't bad for a team of 21 guys, and I'm excited to see how Brad Richard does. Texas Tech isn't the best opponent to begin your career against, but at least he's getting some experience and I highly doubt I'm going to land all of these prospects, but if I'm able to pull somebody like Barrett Jackson, he's going to be in good hands. Until then, though, our offense is going to stink, but we're not much worse than this FCS school, so I'm hoping through Sim we can get our first win of the season, and we cannot. We're also about to run into another problem, as we haven't gained enough points to get any of these guys close to committing, and starting next week, we're going to have a lot less points to spend in recruiting. It looks like it might come crashing downhill fast, but miraculously, these three players made their college decision, and that means I don't have to take points off of any of these top guys. I'm probably not going to jump into one until like the San Diego State game, but the most important one will be this one against North Dakota State. Going into those two, we are sitting at 0-9 on the season, but South Dakota State also hasn't won a game, and I'm hoping that doesn't change after this one. I trust that Brad Richard can get it done, and I'm going to find Dante Turner here. He needs to make a play. He throws a guy off of him, and that's a first down. You'd think his determination would lead to us getting points on this drive, but we just couldn't move the ball, and by the fourth quarter, we're trailing by seven, but we're also inside the red zone. Brad Richard Richard can't hit a target to save his life, but he does have some legs, so I'm just going to scramble with him, and he's going to dive on in. Remember, each result in this rebuild is really important because the tiebreaker is all-time wins, and I think we're going to get a ball back with a chance to tie it up, but we're not going to have that much time, and can someone please make a tackle? It has not been enjoyable to play with this roster, and I've been doing my best to move the ball, but it's almost impossible with two walk-ons on the offensive line, and I had no time in the pocket there. I also forgot to recruit a kicker, so ours is only a 60 overall, which means we need to go for the end zone, and his arm is just not strong enough, that's going to be game, so that's not a great start for the Montana rebuild. All that really matters is visit week though against North Dakota State because every single one of these players is visiting, and we have to make a good impression on them. This is where the Grizzlies play football, by the way, and if it looks like a massive stadium for being in the middle of Montana, that's because it probably is. I'm not sure if it's even possible for them to fill this entire thing up, but at least we should be starting with a touchdown, and compared to how our game against South Dakota State went, we are off to a much better start as Brad Richard is able to take off and get in here. North Dakota State went on a 14-0 run though, so we need to end the half in style, and we do. Compared to how our game against the Jackrabbits went, the offense is moving 10 times smoother, so even though the defense has played about the same, we have a great lead, and I don't think we're going to end up blowing it. The final score ended up being 35-14, to and Dante Turner really made a name for himself with this stat line. It is time for the moment of truth, and I don't see as much yellow as I would have liked to, but we have secured multiple four-star recruits, and I'd like to think we'd eventually get the rest of these guys like Barrett Jackson, but I'm not sure. All we can really do is sim to the end of the year and hope for the best, and hopefully we never finish all the way at the bottom of the Mountain West again. Brad Richard threw more than double the amount of interceptions compared to touchdowns, and obviously that needs to improve, but I just realized Dante Turner is 6'7". No wonder our starting halfback is also our leading receiver, and there is some bad news as Mark Mariani has been fired. Evidently 2-10 and 1-11 and and doesn't cut it, which means we have to start over with new level 1 coordinators and at level 3. Just like the North Dakota State rebuild, nobody wants to transfer to our program, and I wish we weren't an 
all these close offseason recruiting battles because I can only pick a few and I'm going after Barrett Jackson. We lost out on everybody else, but at least we got those three. And I will take the 30th best recruiting class with only 19 players. I'm pretty proud of it as all the overalls on our recruiting board are much higher than they were in the previous season. Plus, we have four new starting wide receivers who are better than everybody else on the roster. Now that I know that Dante Turner is 6'7", I'm really excited to see what he can do. And it looks like EA generated about the same schedule as they did for us last year. But the one important thing to note is I'm no longer going to be starting Brad Richard as freshman Clifton Higgins is better. That gets the team overall all the way up to a 72, which isn't bad. And to start season three against Texas Tech, can our new freshman quarterback get it done? No, he cannot. Postal hasn't won a game yet, so I'm hoping we can pull it off, but we lose by 32. I'm starting to accept that it's going to take a little longer to be good, but I also have to keep in mind that I'm trying to win a championship faster than I did at North Dakota State, which means we need to do it in six seasons. Considering this is already number three, I have a feeling that's going to be a bit of a long shot, especially since Fresno State's beating us in this one. But we do play in a weaker conference and everybody's visiting against Air Force. We might be 0-6 going into it and they might be a top 25 team, but that's not important as I have way more faith than I should in this team. Almost our entire offense out there is brand new, so we should move the ball pretty well. And 6-7 halfback Dante Turner better not get stopped here. I feel like if I recruit right, we can win it all in six seasons and Chuck King just toasted him. The offense just needs to develop for a little longer, but the defense is a bit different. I still have a lot of holes I need to fill on it if we want these guys to develop into a good enough team and there's just way too much time in the pocket for Air Force. We're honestly lucky to hold them to three, but I feel like we need to score on every offensive drive and that's not happening. Nearing the end of the first half, we're trailing by three and I don't like going for it on fourth and five, but this is just going to turn into an arm punt for us. In my opinion, things could have gone way worse. However, I think the Falcons are going to start the third quarter with a touchdown and we got to make a tackle. That was literally such a weak attempt. He barely even flinched and I don't have much hope here. They are pressing us, but they're just keeping up well with the corners. I'm going to throw it up to Chuck King anyway, and there's no way that he was able to come down with that ball. For some reason, he is playing better than Barrett Jackson, who was the best receiver that we ended up recruiting. And I feel like we're about to be right back in this. We are certainly the underdogs, but it is third and 13, and I think we're going to be able to get a stop. If someone would have just made a tackle, okay, there is no way the 82 is still going. That drive ended up resulting in a touchdown because we couldn't stop them, and our tight end drops the ball. For a second, I thought we really had a chance at pulling off the upset, but it's unfortunately still a 13-point game. Because the game glitched out, I had to burn another one of our timeouts, so we only have one remaining, but it looks like Powers is going to get in. So it's technically not over, but we probably need to recover this onside kick, and it is not going to go our way. There's still a little bit of hope, though, and no one is going to be touching Aiden Calvert. He has so much space on the outside, so that's going to wrap it up. Air Force has our number, and they made sure that only one player committed, so I'm not happy because other schools are starting to enter the mix, and I don't think we're going to win everybody on our board. It is not a good sign that we are winless going into the South Dakota State game again, but we are 12 overalls better than them, so since we're at home, theoretically, Sims should work out pretty well for us as we win by 21. That made my job security jump from 3% to 50%, and North Dakota State is 0-10, so I'm gonna sim it, and we also win this. It's amazing how little it takes to not get fired, and the year's already over, so I'm just gonna sim the one against Wyoming where we go out and lose by four. I'm pretty sure these first three seasons is identical to how the North Dakota State one started, but we have freshman Clifton Higgins going forward, who was honestly pretty good. He was a great compliment to sophomore running back Dante Turner, and even though Chuck King pulled off the big plays for us when I stepped in, Barrett Jackson led the team in receiving. The only important player we're losing is Reggie McLean, and I don't know what the odds are that we land all six of these guys, but I'm crossing my fingers. I think we got five of them, which is honestly pretty good, but I am upset that we lost Marcus Ball to Texas A&M. Here in Montana, we just don't have the funds to keep up with them, but we still got quite a few great players, and I feel like the 55th best recruiting class in the country is selling us short. I will say the offseason results are a little underwhelming since there's only a bunch of plus three and plus fours, but all we can really do is just hope that things go better in season four, and if we're going to target a season six championship, I'm going to redshirt every junior on this team. I need them to be around for three more years, so it's almost like this season doesn't even matter, and I just hope that these guys don't get angry and transfer out. With our season six championship goal in mind, I only have JUCOs on the recruiting board right now, and that's because they're normally higher overalls than the players we can get. We're still a 75 going into this one, and we might be competitive, which would be great, but really, I'm just looking to get into the final two seasons. I'm pretty sure we've yet to beat Coastal, and this season's going to be no different. But again, I'm not even phased by these results, and we should have beaten Georgia State. Now, if all these recruiting battles go the way I hope they do, I think I'm going to be able to fill every hole that we might have on this team. But what's scary is if we don't win it all in Season 5 or 6, there is not a chance in the world we could pull it off in Season 7. Right now, this ranking is kind of crazy, but we're projected to be the sixth best team in two years, and hopefully that goes even higher as I'm scheduling everybody for a visit against Utah State. Going into this one, we're 0-5 as we have yet to win a single 
single matchup, but I think that makes sense as most of our roster is redshirted. I just hope none of those guys get pissed off and transfer out, but we'll find out at the end of the year, and it looks like our starting quarterback isn't even out there. Evidently, Clifton Higgins has a strained shoulder, so I'm going to be using all of our backups throughout this entire game, and our kicker can't make it from there. I'm not going to lie, I think I set us up for failure, and I really need to land that tackle, so losing is not an option. At least we held Utah State to just three, but using all these backups has not gone well, and here on fourth down, we're going to drop it. You all won't see all of them, but that's like the fifth time it's happened already today, and if we could get another goal line hold, that would be huge. He has a lot of time in the pocket, though, so we need someone to make a sack, and we do. We just need to end the first half with a touchdown. And one positive thing is even though pretty much all our starters are redshirting right now, the wide receivers aren't, so we still have them. Because of that, when I went with the air raid attack, we were able to move the ball a lot better, and I don't think I'm going to be able to run this in, so I have to go with the pass, and I'm going to find Barrett Jackson. It also looks like they're going to press us, so that gives us a chance to just throw it up and hope for the best, and Barrett Jackson once again is going to come down with it. I'm so glad that we were able to recruit him, but I just hit the wrong button, and Chris Powers is still going to catch it. This receiving core is literally on steroids, and all of them are only sophomores, so we just need to continue to stop Utah State on these third and sixes, and there should have been a guy there. They'd go on to score back-to-back -to -back touchdowns, so we need to score to respond back, and that's going to be an interception to Utah State. Don't want to think about it, but it's pretty safe to say that I have choked. And here on second and goal, I went with the run commit, but they passed it. Even though the season's already pretty much over, this result has a lot to do with whether or not we win a championship, and that's why I have to be able to pull off this comeback. We still have all three timeouts remaining. Ryan Hall's getting wide open. He should take this in easily, and hopefully we can go ahead and get this two-point conversion as well. I'm expecting them to just run it three times, but why did they just go with a pass? I'm a little thrown off because they should be chewing the clock, and I don't really know what to expect here on third and seven. They went with the pass. We need to get some pressure in. They're going to get a lucky route bounce, and they missed the throw. That is absolutely massive, and I can promise you all I am going for the win. They're sending a blitz, though, and they did not just force a fumble on us. They're going to pick it up as well. I thought we were in a great position, but now they're going to be able to run this clock down and the run to the outside is going to gash us. I don't even want to talk about it, boys. We should have won, but because we didn't, Miami might get this tackle that we wanted, and so far, we only have three commits. Unfortunately, I do think I'm going to get fired, and I'm just hoping in the sim up to the North Dakota State game, we finally win at least one. Well, it is not looking good for us. South Dakota State's our best shot at it, and against them, we lose by 19. So no matter what happens, I'm definitely out of here, and I can't believe all these players are still committing to the school, including the tackle that we needed. On top of that, we're going to take down the Bison, and let's just ignore that final result against Wyoming. Recruiting didn't end perfectly, as we did lose out on two DBs I would have liked, but that's kind of what happens when over the course of four seasons, you've never had more than two wins. Due to his injury and his offensive line being redshirted, Clifton Higgins regressed, and our backup tight end for next season ended up being our leading receiver. Unless he has a wild off season, there's no way he's starting over James Washington, and it's time to get on to Mike Mariani III. He's the best former player I found that ever attended Montana, and only one player graduated, but we do have a slight issue as one of our corners transferred out. I didn't recruit anybody to replace him, and we did finally get some transfers, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, as we did decent in recruiting, and with all the JUCOs on our board, it made it really easy to get a lot of high overall players. What I didn't realize is Jared Holmes actually becomes a 76 overall corner, which is perfect, and we had another athlete that can play there as well, so that position is all sorted. It's certainly exciting to see that all of the top 10 players from these training results are juniors, and now that I'm looking at the roster, we only have one senior. We might even be able to win it all in Season 5 because there are no ranked teams on our schedule. I normally wouldn't take you all through a tour of the entire team, but I want you all to see every position and all the players we have. You have to keep in mind that all of these guys are juniors, so they're just going to continue to improve throughout the season, and so even if this year goes south for us, at least next year in Season 6, we should have a good chance at going undefeated in the Mountain West Conference, making the playoffs, and maybe winning a championship. Lastly, I'll let you all take a look at our special team. Teams. And I know we're projected to finish fifth in our division, but we're an 88 overall, and next season we're supposed to be the eighth best team in the country. Honestly, the only thing I'm going to be striving to do this year is trying to win the Mountain West. So even though I should be upset we just lost to Arizona, we're just going to keep on pushing it. We're an 88 overall team, so I can't believe that last one was even that close. But now we're on a two-game winning streak, and I'm just going to go ahead and advance to conference play. I mean, we shouldn't have two losses, but it won't affect our chance of winning the Mountain West. But starting now, each result really counts, and against Nevada, we're going to win by 11. Even though it's early in the season, us and Colorado State are the only two teams in our division without a conference loss. And that makes it hard on me to know which games I should be jumping into against Utah State. They're going to pound us. And I regret skipping out on it, but at the same time, we were nine overalls better than them. The good news is if we beat Colorado State, we'll still make the conference championship, but we also have to win out in all of our other Mountain West matchups. And that means we can't lose to San Diego State. They're hosting, so this is one of the two I'm going to play this year. And I remember how fun this offense
offense was to play with a couple seasons ago, so now that they've improved, I'd imagine they're even better. Inaccurate throws sure aren't the best way to start it off, but you know what? We'll get stops. And I can't forget about our 6-7 running back over there on that side of the field who I'm going to throw it up to, and he does not come down with it. You know what? That was just a terrible read, but for your all's entertainment, I was going for the highlight play, and that should have been an interception. Nearing the end of the first half, though, we still haven't let San Diego State score, which is good news, and I would love to hold them in the red zone here, but I had a feeling they were going to get in. Up to this point in this dynasty, we haven't even made a bowl game, so I'm really needing us to pull something off, but I have a feeling we just gave up a touchdown. They are challenging it, and it looks like his feet did not get in bounds at all. Somehow the play stood, though. Even in video games, home field advantage does exist, and I'm going to try to bomb them over the top to Jackson, who ends up coming down with it, and that is the exact momentum that we need because up to this point, it was looking rough. I also need to remember to get Dante Turner involved because who's stopping the 6'7 man? And here on 4th and 3, we have an opportunity to get a huge stop, but I messed up with my user and they're going to score a touchdown. The play action really faked me out, so I've been using it back on them and it is working like a charm. With 4 minutes left, we're going to actually get a stop on the Aztecs. So honestly, it's time to chew some clock and kick a field goal for the win. We just have to pick up a few first downs in the process and I don't think that'll be too difficult. And we haven't seen much of Clifton Higgins yet, but he's going to keep it on the read option and he's going to go all the way down inside the five. I'm honestly just happy that we're able to leave this game with the win. And Barrett Jackson's making quite the name for himself. The other one we'll be hopping into is against number 22, Colorado State. And they have an even better wide receiver than we do. No matter what happens, we have to send to the end of the year after this. And if we're going to win a championship in season number six, I feel like this is a must win game. If I could just get enough time for this play to develop, I have a feeling I'm going to have Dante Turner on the wheel route. And this throw is perfectly on the money. I've never seen that last name before. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. All that matters is we're going to stop them short. And their ego is so big that they have to go for it on fourth down, which is not going to work. I feel like we're going to have the perfect start to this game and we definitely have them burnt over the top, but Kraft drops it. I cannot get over how often that type of stuff happens to me whenever I film these rebuilds, but he's fighting for the first down. And you know what? As long as we get into the end zone on this drive, I don't really care. Dante Turner apparently has the speed to bust it to the outside. So we're just going to continue to move the ball and I'm just going to scramble in. I thought this was going to be an extremely tight battle, especially because we went to their place, but you won't see me complaining about what I'd assume is our biggest win so far this season. Keep in mind, Clifton Higgins is only a junior, and now comes the toughest stretch because I have to sim these final three games where we need to win out. So far, so good as we beat both of the Dakota schools, and all that's left is our game against Wyoming where we are going to lose by three. I just have to hope that we still finished on top of our division, and it looks like we ended up doing so. We're going to be playing 1-11 Hawaii in the conference championship, and we definitely got here faster than we did with the Bison. If next year goes well, we are on pace to win it a lot faster with Montana. But in order to do that, we need to win the Mountain West Conference Championship to set us up good for next season. And on this lucky route bounce, we're going to get a huge play, and this is going to go for about 50 yards. That was a monumental moment, as ever since then, our offense hasn't had any issues, and we're already going to be taking a 14-0 lead. It's kind of wild to think that every starter on this team will be returning next season, and they're all going to jump like 4-5 to five overalls as well, which is incredibly exciting. Here on the goal line, we should have gotten a pick. Since it wasn't, though, we're going to need to stop them on fourth and goal. And why'd they go for the one-handed catch? I don't understand why they would do such a thing, but Clifton Higgins is going to need to use his legs to avoid the safety, and he's got some jets on him, which makes him incredibly fun to use. By the end of the first half, I thought we'd be up by a ton, but it's 14 to 14, so we're looking to score on this drive. And if I'm being completely honest, I'm not making a read on this play. I am throwing it up to Antoine Kraft, who comes down with it. This guy is in triple coverage, and he just doesn't care at all. But the Rainbow Warriors refuse to go away, and I have a feeling that they're about to score. It's not easy to hold them on the goal line, but we shot that gap perfectly. And you know what? As long as we don't give up something fluky, we should be okay, but my user sucks. I'm so used to playing in online games that I forget the computer will target your user whenever you make a bad play with them. And I'm pretty ticked off that we gave up seven there, but passing has been going very well, and I'm just gonna dot them up the whole drive. But again, we have them on a third and goal for like the third time today, and the halfback screen better not work there. I was all over both of those from the jump. And let's see if we can make some magic happen on this kick return. We did not just fumble the ball. I have come to the conclusion that EA just must hate me, and they're probably going to score a touchdown. But I have nothing to lose, so I am all set up to stop the run here, and we still can't do it. I mean, it's technically not over. We still could get the onside kick. For some reason, Barrett Jackson just toasted them. But odds are, they're going to end up holding onto this ball, and they ended up doing so. You could argue that we could use our timeouts and potentially get it back with like five seconds left, but their quarterback's literally just faster than our entire defense. Winning a Mountain West Conference Championship just wasn't meant to be. And I'm not even excited for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Clifton Higgins wasn't disappointing, but I was hoping for a little bit better.
better, and I guess he made up for it on the ground, but I'd like to see more next season. Receiving-wise, Barrett Jackson and Chuck King did dominate, and I'm glad to say that after simming this bowl game, we were able to win by three. It's kind of crazy that we had four terrible years and then one good one, but with just 150 overall leaving the program, everything is set up for this team to run the Mountain West, and with all of these high overalls, I feel like that won't be too difficult to do. What I think it'll come down to is the schedule that EA generated for us, and once again, there's nobody ranked on here. As a team that's rated 97 overall, that should not be a problem, and I can't believe we're projected to finish all the way down here at 47. Last year, we played against Colorado State, so this season, I'm just gonna go ahead and sim it, and I'm not exactly sure which of these games I wanna jump into because we should just beat everybody. Those last two were both a little bit too close for comfort, but as long as we stay undefeated, I don't really care, and I can't believe beating those four ranked programs got us ranked in the top 25. What's crazy is I feel like I shouldn't even need to hop into any of these because of how good we are, but I'll still pick two and just make sure nothing goes wrong when I hop into it. I can't imagine that we'd lose to Air Force, but I'm also not gonna risk it, and why is Brad Richard out there on the field right now? That cannot be good news for this team. Clifton Higgins is out for the season with a foot fracture, and I feel like this is a nightmare come true because I never expected Brad Richard to be on the field again. He's still like a 90 overall, so it's not like he's a terrible quarterback, but he's no 97, and I think we're just gonna need to lean on our defense as we're gonna get the fourth down stop. By midway through the second quarter, we've still only scored seven points, and I'm gonna try to go deep, but the connection clearly just isn't there, so it's no surprise that we could be trailing going into the half if we can't get some stops. The clock is ticking, and the computer's not great about using timeouts, but somebody is wide open, so I think we're gonna be down by three, unless Dante Turner can pull off something crazy. I don't know why he's on the kick return team, but he's a bit slow. Since Air Force opened up the third quarter with a touchdown, I'm very happy that we jumped into this game. I just threw an interception as well. This is gonna be bad. Literally, everything was set up for this to be Montana's season. Winning a championship in season six is if everything went well, but we can't even stop the halfback screen now, so I probably won't happen. I mean, it honestly looks like we're about to lose this game, and I'm gonna get out there to potentially make a tackle, but we miss. It is not looking good for the Grizzlies right now, and we really need to hold them to just a field goal, but the zone didn't play it. We're gonna need a miraculous comeback, and it's one that'll only be possible if they keep pressing us. However, because our offensive line doesn't seem to know how to block, I couldn't get the throw off, even though we had a clear touchdown on that play. And now it's time for attempt number two. If their corners can keep up with our guys, they deserve to win. That is a terrible throw, and it is all over. It looks like this Montana rebuild's about to go seven seasons, and we are gonna get a stop. But with such little time on the clock, I can't see anything happening, and nobody's open at this point. I throw another interception. So Air Force gets to leave with the win. The only way something can go right is if Sim favors us, and pretty much every team that's above us inside the top 20 would all need to lose at least one game. I just can't believe how terribly we played, but we did lose our starting quarterback, and with our strength of schedule, I can't see us climbing much higher than this. Now, if we lose to teams like Old Dominion, I'm just gonna completely give up. But if we continue to raise a few ranks a week, we could make the playoffs. Since we only have a few games left, I'm not expecting it, but we keep on winning. And since last year ended with a loss to Wyoming, I'm thinking about playing it. Going into it, we're pretty much already guaranteed a spot in the conference championship, but now we've climbed up to number 11, and there's some teams with three losses above us. As long as this doesn't go like the Air Force one, we'll be fine. And I'm gonna go with a little play action to open it up because I think we can toast them over the top and he's not keeping up with powers. Of course, we always get stupid drops though, so it's gonna take us until the end of the first quarter to find the end zone with Brad Richard. Trust me, I can already see the comments and I know that he's not terrible, but I am. And I'll accept that most of the time, but so many things went wrong against the Falcons that I just couldn't control. Now, Kraft needs to somehow get out of here with his speed so we can score, and what an ending to the first half. Wyoming doesn't seem to want to go away though, even though they're like a 75 overall, and that's annoying because we need to win like 50 to get the polls to like us. Our strength of schedule is already terrible, and of course Terrence Jackson takes off, so I'm just gonna enjoy the beautiful backdrop and take our easy field goal. Everything was set up for us to make our championship run, so I'm just a bit frustrated, but I'm a little calmer now, and that's because that interception was wild, and now we have full control of the game. With about a minute left, we just have to run out the rest of the clock, and as long as I don't do anything too stupid, they're not gonna score twice. I would have much rather finished the regular season undefeated, but at least we're gonna seal it with that sack, and now we just have to hope that a lot of other teams lose. Well, we're up to number seven, so only a few more things need to go our way, and we're not in a bad position going into conference championship week, because either Ohio State or Wisconsin has to lose, knocking them out of the playoffs, and the Buckeyes are gonna be out. All we have to do is win this one versus Nevada, and we lost the Mountain West Championship last year, so I cannot let that happen again. Our opening drive has gone pretty well, and that's man-to-man, -man, so we'll take it all day, but we can never let off the pedal, because we've seen crazier things happen, and they're already dropping it. Normally, whenever it rains in the game, it gives me issues, but we are the better team in the situation, so we're better equipped to handle the weather, and we're already up 14 to zero. I don't want to discredit the Wolf Pack because we could still blow this lead, but so far they've given us no issues, and it looks like they're going to try to bomb us over the top, and our linebacker can't
can't make a play. Stuff like that is why it's still a close game here in the third quarter, but their offense hasn't been as great as ours, so we have a pretty good lead here, and I wish we could just get a sack, but they're gonna score instead. By the time they get the ball back again, it's not really gonna matter. We should be in field goal range to take a three-possession lead, and I'd honestly rather just go for it on fourth and inches so we don't risk the ball slipping. It took a little longer than I would have liked, but we've done it, and the Mountain West Trophy is coming back to Montana. This is how the top four ended up shaping out, and for someone that hasn't started since his freshman year, Brad Richard did okay. Dante Turner definitely carried more of the load, though, and with one more game, Barrett Jackson's gonna clear a thousand receiving yards. This is what the playoff picture is looking like, and hopefully we can go out and take down Wisconsin. If we're gonna be able to do so, Brad Richard needs to have a good game, and I need to play almost perfectly. That's a great throw. So early on, we should be able to get onto the board first. It didn't take the Badgers long to respond back, though, which is a little bit concerning, and I'm gonna try to step up in the pocket here, make a play. We have a wide open wide receiver, and he holds onto it. Sometimes it's hard to believe that I wrote off Brad Richard as a freshman and never gave him another chance, but now we need to rely on him more than ever. Not that our defense isn't great, but I'm expecting them to give up quite a few points today. So whenever we can hold the Badgers, it ends up being massive for us, and we're already at midfield. None of our deep routes seem to be getting open on this play, so I'm just gonna take our tight end in the flat, James Washington, and it is hard to believe that this guy's a tight end. He moves so elusively, and the wheel route is wide open, but I threw it a bit too late. If I've learned anything, it's that I should probably just stick to running the ball instead of passing it, and if we get in here, we're gonna be going up 21 to 7. It just feels like we have full control of this game, and they're throwing up a one-on-one -on -one ball. This should be an interception, but we don't make a play on it. If things just went the way they should, it would be so nice, but EA does not seem to like it that way, and by halftime, it's all tied up at 21. I also just noticed that our ball end zones is UTEP, so we're just gonna ignore that, and at this point in the video, it doesn't really matter. It's fourth and two. We get the sack, so what a momentum swinger that is, and I'm not sure why they didn't just go for the easy field goal. This should be an easy first down to pick up, but the read option got locked up, and that's exactly why I pass most of the time, because running fails you. We're going into the fourth still tied up, and I'd argue that this is one of the most important plays of the game, is we're gonna hold them to three. I'm honestly just glad that we're still in it, and with about four minutes left, we're down to the 35. I'm gonna find Barrett Jackson, and he just put that corner in a spin cycle. He's taking it into the end zone. So as time trickles down, we have put this in the hands of our defense, but Wisconsin wasted no time scoring, so we're gonna have two minutes left to go down the field and get at least a field goal. I'm not sure how Brad Richard's gonna do under pressure, but all he can do is make the right read, and that was a tight window. What we can't do is score too fast, as we are already flying down the field. So I'm gonna try to keep the clock in mind by just taking the check down to our tight end, and he throws one, two, three guys off of him. James Washington has made a name for himself, and the backup halfback's getting down to about the one, so I'm gonna let the clock run down to eight seconds, take a timeout, and call a quarterback sneak to end all of it. Montana is going on to the national championship, and it's gonna be against my Kentucky Wildcats. I would never expect to see them here in football, but it's awesome that they were able to make it all the way, and I'm hoping that we're able to take them down. Barrett Jackson's gonna get open here, but he will not hold on to it, so we're gonna have to punt it to the Wildcats early. Obviously, that's not very ideal, but we should be able to get a stop, assuming someone plays a zone, and I would love to know what 24 was going for with this defense. I don't trust him to play his zone the right way, so now I'm gonna use your lock onto him, and we're gonna give up a massive run on third and long. This is certainly not the ideal start that I was hoping for, as they're gonna get in here, but we've moved the ball pretty well, and Barrett Jackson should create some separation here, but that ball was placed horribly. I swear, the computer always does some crazy stuff on Heisman mode, like pick that up, and I can't believe that with a minute left in the first half, we still haven't gotten on the board, but it is coming soon. Barrett Jackson just needs to create a little bit of separation, and I'm gonna find him for six, but that was an amazing defensive play, and this might be a bad decision, but I don't wanna take the field goal. I'm gonna roll out and find somebody in the end zone. Sometimes it pays off to be risky, and I wish Kentucky wasn't so run heavy, but because they are, they have been draining the clock, and it wasn't easy to finally get them to a third down, but we did, and they're marked short. It's gonna be a close call, but they go with the pass, and the running back catches it, and by the time we're even in the position to potentially score again, we're trailing 17 to seven, so we need to get in fast. It all happened so quick, but I'm gonna take the curl route to Chuck King, and all we're gonna need is one defensive stop. Their offense has been so confusing, I wish we could tackle the running back, but that is certainly easier said than done, as he has made my life 10 times harder. They're gonna have somebody open, and I think this is where they're gonna try to run out the clock, but we can make tackles. On second and 10, I just need to get into the gap, and Antonio Bishop has somehow made himself free. There's no way that this is gonna be the end of the run. We're not gonna win it in six seasons. Are you kidding me? Kentucky has literally played a perfect game, and at this point, it's pretty much done. I mean, we've moved the ball down the field pretty quick, but we still need to get it back again, and I'm just not sure if we're gonna be able to do that with a rushing attack. I should probably try our luck at the onside kick, but they're easily gonna recover it, and it all comes down to whether or not we stop the run. They're so confident, they're even taking a knee, and I think by the time this punt lands, we're gonna have about 15 seconds left, but you know what? 
I will take that. For how terribly things have gone, we don't even deserve to be in it. And hang on, why'd they send a blitz? Chuck King's gonna be able to go all the way down to the 40. I should probably spike it because we're almost in field goal range, but my heart is just racing and I'm gonna throw it to Chuck King again down to the 15. We're actually still in this game and I feel like I need to run a quick play. I can't take too long on it. They did send a blitz. The running back's open and he catches it, but he's gonna go down at the inch yard line. We need to spike it. This is so risky, but I'm gonna go for the quarterback sneak for the win and we get it. We did it. We have won the championship. I don't know how there's still even a second on the clock, but that was the craziest 20 second drive I have ever had in NCAA football. And the Montana rebuild's gonna be done in six seasons. So that means this one was finished faster than the North Dakota State one. And in part three, we'll see if I can top that with South Dakota State. Who needs to win it in five seasons? And if it takes them six, they need to have a better record than 29 and 48. Anyways, that wraps this one up, boys. And I would recommend watching this next one that YouTube thinks you'll love even more.